Yeah, early on in school, where I was going through sculpture, I was already uh, interested in sort of actually making two-dimensional pieces within uh, works that would be having a three-dimensional context. And so the, these things tend to go to the wall, and sometimes they still do. And working with the uh, dimensions not being as much of the thing that I'm trying to get to, but what the concept is, what the materials can do, and they've lent themselves to going towards this flatness where I can condense three-dimensional space into a two-dimensional object has been something I've been interested in. Previously, in a lot of my work, I was using uh, sort of amounts of materials where I was taking commonplace materials and putting them through a laborious process that with its repetition could uh, become about the mass and I was interested in taking uh, a different medium and one of the things that uh, has been used a lot in this series is light and sort of working with light as this abundance in itself and what the medium can do in terms of connecting with the viewer. Yeah, with, the, with the show title Indian Summer uh, really thinking about this sort of uh, out of the blue seasonal change which is the most common uh, coin term or knowledge of the words Indian summer and also is sort of a late blooming and thinking about these materials that I'm using and sort of how the viewer approaches them and suddenly there's this unexpected or late blooming or out of the sort of ordinary sort of uh, thing that happens where they start to realize what materials they're actually looking at. I'm interested in how I can do the most with the least and sort of make the material be in a number where it's not about its number and at the same time it's not an issue if there there is a hundred or a thousand where the, the material just fits the best with its concept particularly to the image of nature and that's where I'm most interested right now is still constructing these images of nature that are most sort of iconic images like moons and mountains and sunsets so that, that the viewer can really connect to the materials from these imagery that they really actually have seen as nature and then start to really think about the word nature. I think my major objective right now is to really sort of look in at these images that people really connect with such as the moon, the mountains, stars, these sort of things and really I feel like there's still exploration for me to use those images and use commonplace materials to start to make those. I'm interested in depleting the number of the materials. I'm interested in how I can shift uh, the construction methods of these materials. And then from there, once those pieces are done, there still will be, and always will be for me, the way that these pieces connect in the show. And once uh, two or three pieces gets made, it tends to lead me to thinking about another piece when I start to visualize how they'll operate in the space. So they sort of go hand in hand. I wouldn't say that it's the first thing that comes out. I would say that the objects start to be created and then uh, as they go and get uh, finished up in the studio I start possibly to have a vision for another object. When I'm working it could start with a material. I'm uh, finding the material and do a lot of looking while I'm shopping basically or shopping while I'm looking. And it's just kind of going through stores and places and uh, maybe picking something up and taking a look at it and see what we can do. Other times uh, the material could fall into my hand. Uh, the materials that I use, the history of the material, what the material is, can have levels that really sort of connect to the work and connect to the concept. For instance, in one-on-one -on -one with the dice here, the dice which are uh, gambling dice, casino dice, uh, but have that sort of connotation of something that uh, certain uh, different religions and people will consider just sort of uh, evil. What you're getting is this sort of fireball, this sort of questioning of where creation is and also at the same time the polar opposite of what could be hell using the dice which comes into play as chance uh, 101 again also being the um, beginning of the Bible in terms of Genesis in the chapter and also even looking at something with a level of binary code 101 and coming back to that what is the origin what is the source of something as simple as fire and connecting all those two so there's different levels that that the piece actually operates on through connecting back to the title and the medium. With Soft Sunset, I really started with uh, working with the notion of real lighting a sunset. I knew that I wanted to make a sunset and I knew that I wanted to have these lights come through and I wasn't sure exactly what did I want the surface of this uh, 
coming through material to have, and that's when I found the uh, polyethylene tarp and the polyfill, both uh, the poly, polyfill giving this sort of cloud texture that it was sort of a goal that I was trying to do, and then the polyethylene sort of being this great chance thing that happens with this white polyethylene that starts to read like canvas. So I started thinking about how I could treat this thing uh, with the way I positioned this polyfill to start to uh, have references along with the colors as well, working with those to the history of painting of imagery such as Rothko's and Hudson River School and these different, uh, the luminous, the way that this thing could speak a dialogue and start to deal with some references to art history, but in the end also have this sort of opening of these clouds where you're inside of them in a very sort of cinematic way, almost like the beginning or the end of a movie. Uh, encompassing the viewer at a level that's not really uh, looking out at it but being in it and looking through it. Yeah, One of the major influences on my work would be Marshall McLuhan's writing, particularly with his example of the television being the contemporary campfire. So both of them we sit around and we get to hear stories and at the same time what we're really getting mesmerized is the flickering light. I think Solo Witt and what he did in terms of really starting out with is being coined conceptual art at its time uh, was really an important thing that has influenced my work as well as the body of someone like Vito Acconci where it might not come directly through my work I'm really interested in how his work has evolved and seen in my own steps as I keep on moving into new work where it's going. I think there's a dialogue of uh, the use of sort of mundane materials that has come from a long uh, history within, within art and various artists using it, and I feel like I'm participating in that dialogue. My goal, I think, is to really try to take the materials and sort of get what I kind of feel like is almost like a portion of the sublime, where suddenly this thing's still an object and it's not having to be... Uh, doing something past its scale, it's allowing the viewer to start to get to that scale through the object itself. Right now I'm really interested in just working with the images of nature and I feel like there's still a lot for me to explore, but I'm very much open to working with other subject matter and when it comes along, a lot of times I'll have works on paper that I might do that I might not include in the show that were made around the same time as some pieces, uh, but they'll have something that might not be so nature specific in terms of the nature of um, uh, outside imagery that people would connect with. There might be something uh, dealing with some of my interest in uh, mathematics and numbers. There might be something uh, dealing almost with even the self and things that might even be around, such as something in the past I've done, like a coin collection, where just things that are laying around where I can feel a little more uh, in, in a certain level loose with. Really, if we're all kind of interested and in wanting this sort of longing for where people will be like, oh, I just want to be out in the woods, I just love going out to the mountains, then We'd, we'd be living there, and we're not. So there's all these things that surround us in urban environments and uh, that, that are commonplace material that are just around us in our everyday life that really become the nature. Mm -hmm. <laughs>